Thanks, William. William did a very nice performance of this in the competition last week, and we have to praise his last movement, that all of those fluent thirds, which went off very well. Remember that Clementi was very famous in his own day for his, for his double notes. And some of the sonatas contain extraordinarily complex and long periods of sixths and thirds all through them on an instrument that was probably a third lighter than we've got to deal with today. So it's quite a feat for us today. I was interested in, in William's edition here, which is a copy from an old one, but it's got, oh, hello. I might just put that down because I'm not using that. But, um, it's got here Allegro con espressione. It, with my memory was in the urtext it says piuttosto allegro, which means rather in the style of an, uh, more like an allegro with expression, which does mean a lot because it confuses us even more. <laughs> Either we go be below the allegro thinking perhaps towards an allegro or more than allegro. And if you know Demi Denko's recording of this, for instance, it's quite swift. He goes about <laughs> so he thinks of that on the, on the more tostro side. <laughs> but it's a very expressive and a marvelous piece of its day. It's written about 1790. So it's before the Beethoven sonata we heard by, what, they were the end of the 1790s? I think that's over 10 sonatas. And this is quite a different world, isn't it? I think he wrote it in London. Um, Clementi, I think we can hear other influences, other composers. Anybody, any Italian composer that you might think comes to mind in this piece? Well, sometimes the textures and, and gestures remind one of Scarlatti. And if you look at the earlier piano music of the Italian, Scarlatti, of course, based in Spain, but the music was known, and um, Galuppi, these sort of people, the textures of that earlier period are in sometimes Clementi as well. We know Beethoven loved this sonata, and he used to get his students to practice, to, to play the Clementi sonatas. I never know whether that was a two-edged sword because he wanted to keep them off his own. <laughs> but the Clementi sonatas, of course, are marvelous for the technique the wonderful finger technique. This one, though, is filled with so many fascinations of style that we can explore, and I thought we could explore this together a wee bit. Should we start it once more? Are you doing it faster than you did before? You don't have to. <laughs> you do it your way. <laughs> okay. Now, that's a wonderful opening, isn't it? And I think that he's written hairpins. He's written <laughs> the bear. So you can enjoy that a bit more. Do you want to show us that? And listen. <laughs> that phrase of the sixth is what we've got to hear as the audience. Should we do it once more? Are those notes joined? <laughs> do you write into the bottom of the key? That's it. Because essentially, William, what he's written is an ornament. It's, it's, it's almost like a turn, isn't it? So just think of that top A with a little bit more length, a tiny bit, see what happens. I hear a gap in the sound. He's written a slur over it, so I think. Full legato, if you can. Okay, now our left hand just doesn't just come in. Left hand has to comment. Is Give us a little bit more intent. And he's written he's written this lips slur rom rom the portati three quarter length. So it's a lovely colour. That's very crucial to get that right. We've got so few notes, each note is thousand percent telling, isn't it? For the audience function. No, that has a, I hear a gap in that. Do you want is that as lovely as you can do that? No, it's not. I hear a bumpy here. You just went slowly. Second F sharp. Yes, better once more. Now this brings us to another thing. Remember when you end the phrase and go into the phrase succeeding, we've got to think exactly of the sound that we're at, where, where we're the level that we've come to. And the piano is difficult because we have the decay factor. So the, the touch that you then present, and uh, uh, Clementi's written tenuto at the end of the phrase, he writes tenuto on that line, then 
To know to on those, so he wants a line over those, really expressive. But when you begin, just be aware of the level that we've left, so it doesn't sound like something happening there and something happening there. You, know. you may want that, that may be an effect that you would choose for some time, but I think here, just listen hard. Should we try that once more at the beginning? Nice, so that was lovely. Okay, as we did with our Beethoven the other minute, when we have those re repetitions of the phrase, or some people do, depending on your speed, depending where you put the trill, but it's nice before. Then he comes away. So you can choose to do something to colour that a little bit, so it's not just free repetitions, but it's things that develop. Do you want to try? That's good. So I would suggest a little crescendo and out. And we hear the left hand, mm, that gives us interest. Now that's where it's interesting, because he suddenly writes forte. So he's given us that elegiac opening, that very expressive opening, that then suddenly, and he turns it away. You can make it more dramatic, more free, more free. Should we go? That's like thinking, isn't it? It's wistful, it's thinking, it's a thought. Should we try? Then suddenly. That was very nice. The only thing I would do is keep the left hand a bit more present. The harmonies. Nice. Now there he writes the phrase lifted at the end. Make it beautiful. Make, no, you didn't listen. That was nice. Listen to your B. Da -dum -da -dum -dum. Listen to it. Make us listen. If you hear it, we hear it. Once more. Mm. And that can be that's forte right to the end. He doesn't stop it like the other one with the decrescendo. So we need to place the cadence and do. Shape, but make sure this is still strong. Um, where are we? To here. And then because it. Wonderful moment. Enjoy that. Should we go back to. First one? Now bigger. Okay, so now we have the same thing, of course he develops it. So I think we now just do something different with it. And then he, just a little, you can put a bit more pedal on the chord first. Now you colour it. Nice, but I think you've got to show us a little more that Clementi's taken a turn here. He's gone from, and last time we had to the cadence and to the dominant. Now he does. So he's going to the relative major. So I think. Do we have to hear that? Good. Crescendo. Crescendo. Now, there you go. Now, that's exciting, isn't it? And you can really grow with that. Have fun with that wonderful left hand. You can show us how brilliant your fingers work there. Right hand. It's rhetorical, isn't it? A rhetorical gesture. That's great. Do you want to do it again from... Yes, from just from there. Da 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 dum da dum. Crescendo, left hand. Nice. Now 
Now that's where we got, that's, that's how he builds the whole of the opening statement, which is magnificent. It's beautiful, isn't it? Let's go on. Okay, now you're missing out a moment there, because which is the expressive note? No, I think it's the B sharp. There's your dissonance. It's resolved. Wait, more of that. And also, it's a long note. You've got to have the tone that it will sustain. Not many notes to play, so therefore they've got to really sing out. Okay. It's a sigh, a little sigh. As you grow, go through that very important chromatic line, which is always going to be intense, he's actually giving you this in the left hand. Little Swatsandi. So he wants that. Little energy moment. Don't rush them, give themselves almost a little bit more length. So, sorry. Don't rush over them. That's it. softer. Soft now. That now it's decrescendo. Decrescendo means loud, doesn't it? When you start it. Okay. <laughs> Once more. Good. Hold on, we haven't got that bit yet. I, want, I haven't finished that bit. I'm going to have a few more things to say. Dum, dee, dee, dee. Now here's suddenly two hands do it. So I'd make it even more brilliant. And then you've got Staccato Sforzandi, left hand. Really make us show what Clemente's doing. Each bar is interesting in this piece. It's a masterpiece in its own way, this now. Can we go back to... Um, That's the end of that brilliant thing. Then he says dolce, so he wants a new mood. <laughs> Time. So you let it speak, but you've got to let the sound clear in the hall. Don't just rush to that. We need time. Imagine a big hall, big space. That forte needs to dissipate, doesn't it? And then we need to hear. A little bit of pedal help there. And we need to hear the imitation. Should we just go from the cadence? Watch there, because Clementi's written a little crescendo up. Each time. That's it. Sunday coming though, so they need space. Watch. <laughs> Don't rush those. Because <laughs> we won't hear them with Schwartz Sunday if you don't give that little bit of tiny bit of time. From there. though, are you? You can practice that. Bit. We'll go on. Good. I think it's nice, but I think you've got too soft too soon, because Clementi repeats that three times, and I think diminuendo starts. So I'd keep the tension up here. When you start it... you can get softer, otherwise it doesn't mean enough. Should we go back to... Good. Now that's nice. Uh, do you know why I like that more? 
because you've got a tie at the top of the phrase. And now with that sforzando and the tension of the harmony, I can hear what the tie is, what the music's doing. It's very chromatically intense, so he wants us to hear all that. <laughs> those things you can explore those we do that's right and then he's if you I don't want to be pedantic with the score except I do <laughs> <laughs> he's written suddenly at the end of all that nice falling away and those interesting chromatic noodly bits, suddenly rinforzando, which means reinforcing the sound. So he wants you to do this. Something like that. Doesn't have to be as loud as that. But that's important. So he's displacing everything. He's doing really interesting things here. And then you, out of that comes the repetition of the... All that, he comes down. So, so you, you need to make us hear that because then you can fall away from it. It's really important. Can we pick that up somewhere? Okay, and then watch what he writes. He writes what's undo, it's what's undo. So you, the left hand's important. to hear all that tension there, especially because it's relatively high on the piano and it can sound a bit thin on a modern instrument. <laughs> that's right, because, William, what's happening is, that's what's under there, leads into a new event. It's like something going like that, and the sforzando on the A starts your sforzando on the left hand. See what I mean? And that makes it so interesting and so intense. It's brilliant, really. triplets, he suddenly puts a new rinforzando in. It's a marvellous moment in music. And then he's... So you can find a new expression there. Suddenly it goes back into the wonderful elegiac, like the opening. Um, but... That's the harmonic structure. Isn't that beautiful? So I think you enjoy that. Can we go back to? So that's what uh, the Rin Forzando quaver needs a like a little line over. There you go. Listen to the harmonies. Unclear, isn't it? Should we do that again? Don't. Don't. Oh no, no, you're not catching a bus. So let's listen to our left hand. We need to hear that. Some nice things there.
would just suggest, as, we, as with before, when you get to the fortissimo climax, he then over the next whole line says, pulcro pulcro di crescendo, so don't go too softly soon. So here. Keep this. Because you see, he's written these little linfoots under again. So keep it up. Should we just try? Go back to that. a lot of things in that development now. Do you feel that it's given yourself more space and more color? More, more showing us the little elements that Clementi uses to build up this extraordinary chromatic part, really. Um, so we're, we're finishing dramatically in that first half with that big cadence and then suddenly <coughs> takes it back to that sort of sound. So you start off in that mood The lovely left hand is beautiful. So that's still having that same feel that we're ending the section. So it sounds cogent within itself. And then off he goes, building that dramatic. That sort of thing. So that's how I would think it. Keeping the crescendo up right to the end and holding it there. I think we can have a little bit more of the rests. Because your left hand punctuates that. Da -da 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 -da. Mm. That sort of thing helps. It's all structural. The same here, listen to that. Go down. chromatic structure through it. Can we just try that once more? So plenty of space. Sorry. When you start. Once more, let's try just left hand. two people talking to each other. You need to hear them both. <laughs> so don't take, don't drop the ball there. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> More crescendo. Keep it up. Okay, there he goes to forte, by the way. Make more.
the most magic moment of the whole piece, isn't it? In fact, the whole sonata. It's the most marvelous mo move that Clementi suddenly goes into that D major. So I think, look at his phrasing. He's still got that hairpin in the middle, so you need to color that. Make us listen to that, it's just the most beautiful thing in the world. So let's go, I would want a bit more left hand. First note, do, 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 you start those, really exact. Da, 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 da. Good, now, and, and as we're going into the coda, you can place this trill. And then out of that comes this dog. Because he's never put an accompaniment with that before. It's always been a line. Has it? But now we have. So enjoy that. Give us a bit more space. I heard this done with the trill from the upper note, which then is quite nice. It gives an added tang to that little pinch. But you know, your teacher may not want that, so I don't say do it. But just think. But it, uh, it's really quite beautiful. It's like the Mozart concerto. It is beautiful, don't you think? It has its little color. color. So look, it's very expressive. It's like a sudden. I really enjoyed that, what you were doing. Should we be doing... And remember the piano was after that, so the cadence... Then the song. So it does, it, it, you end the cadence, like, not heavy, but with that intensity. Can we go once more from... by a little bit more length on that note there. So we really hit. Here we are back into the home key. And good. Now make it. Now even more expressive. What are you going to do to make it? He's written suddenly espresso. He hasn't done that before. So what do you think we could do there? Yeah. Oh, well, could. But we could do other things. <laughs> I wouldn't sentimentalize it in this piece. And we don't know what Clementi said. He's not standing with us. But <laughs> um, you can do it with touch. You can do it with a little bit. You could even add a soft pedal in or something. But just something different. So it is more beautiful. That second time. Should we go from the cadence? Is that as lovely as you can play that? That's right. That's beautiful. So with the resonance of the D is so important. Set it. Time. That's nice. You could end that more beautifully, though, couldn't you? You end with that one. That's right. So you've got to make sure there's not enough, you're not heavily weighting it. 
You don't want to, you just stomp on it, but it's beautiful if you can do that. Do it again. I still find your second not, not as nice as your first and third. <laughs> I think it's your fingering. What, are you using three? Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, so just be careful you don't bump the F sharp. in this piece we need to hear all this so don't play it fast over so do especially with the little swatsandi they do need like a line over them can we try that again I really like what you did here it's so beautiful isn't it Natasha have we got one minute left okay one minute we got to get to the end okay <laughs> say goodbye by just playing the opening phrase again. <laughs> Too nice to miss out on. Shh. Oh, that's all we need. Just that wonderful moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a wonderful piece, isn't it, that? <laughs> 